What's up? Welcome to the video. I hope you're doing well. Hope you're doing swell wherever you are in the world. My microphone's broken. I don't know why. Maybe my kid's fault. Not sure. Don't want to blame him without all the, all the evidence. But I'm using my internal mic, so we'll see how this works. In this video, we're talking about everything text. We're getting texty. We're bringing texty back. I, no, I, no, I shouldn't delete that. No, you know what? No, I'm not going to delete it. I'm keeping it. Let's keep it rolling. If you're brand new to Affinity Photo, this uh, video should be pretty helpful. And if you just forget stuff like I do, this video will also be helpful. Now, before we start, I always like to reset my studio back to default just to make sure our screens look the same. And to do that, you go up to Window. Say it with me. Studio. studio. Reset studio. studio. Okay, perfect. Now, our text tools are located on the left-hand side in our toolbar. I'm going to go down here, and I have this A with a little square around it, and there's a little triangle down to the bottom right of it. If I click on that, there's two options, artistic text tool and the frame text tool. Now, the artistic text tool is for, like, headings and headlines, and the frame text tool is for paragraphs. So let me show you. I'm going to click on the artistic text tool, and now my mouse changes to an A with a target. Now, all I have to do is click and drag out to the size I want, and I'm just going to type hello because I'm, I'm very polite. And I can do a couple different things here. I can increase the size by using this uh, thing up here. I don't know what you call it. The size box. What do you call it? I don't know. Or I can grab these little nodes here and drag or make it bigger or smaller. Very fancy. Now, I can also rotate it by grabbing this little box up here. And I can just spin it around. And a little tip here. If I hold shift, it'll move in 15 degree increments. There we go. Cool. Do I want to change the color? I thought you'd never ask. In the top right corner, I can click on this little color box up here, and then I can just move this around to whatever color I want. I'm just going to keep it like that. Now, let's go over back to our text tool. Let's click on this, and let's do the frame text tool. If I click on that, my mouse changes to a T with a little box around it, and I can just click and drag it out and let it go. Now, nothing happens, but you'll see in the layers panel now, we have a hello layer, which is the text I created first, but now we have this frame text layer that's been created. Now, in this box, I can either type something, I can cut and paste, and for this example, I'm going to insert something called filler text so you can see what it looks like. And it's good for your designs if you're doing mock-ups, just how you see, you want to see how it's going to look. And to do that, you go up to text, insert filler text. And then now I have this text here, and I can move this box around, and you'll see the text will kind of flow with the box depending on how I, how I move it. Cool. All right, so let's delete that one. Let's bring this down to center. Let's just find the center. Don't embarrass me. There it is. Okay, and let's do some basic effects. Now, at the bottom of our panel down here, right at the very bottom, there's an effects button. And if I click on that, I get this box. And we're just going to go over a few of these. First one we're going to do is outer shadow because that's a really popular one. If you see this little plus or this X, it means you can add multiple of it. So multiple shadows, multiple overlays, and you can hit the X to remove them. So let's click to enable it. And now we have these sliders where we can move up the uh, intensity or the radius, the offset, and the intensity. And you'll see the shadow start to come in as I pull it up. Now, when I use this tool, uh, sometimes you'd like to use the offset tool, which is right here. And this allows you to move the shadow wherever you want. So I'm going to click on that. And now I can move the shadow around freely uh, wherever I want, like up here where it doesn't make sense or over here. Anyways, that's the shadow or outer shadow. Uh, let's go next up to outer glow because I like this one. I'm going to click on that. And if I go and drag the radius up, you're going to see nothing's really happening because the color is set to white and the background's white. So let's click on this color box here. Let's make it this blue and let's drag it up and you'll see it gets this kind of outer glow. So that is cool. I like that one. It's a favorite of mine. Uh, we can also do an outline by clicking on the outline and enabling that. Right now, the color is set to black and you can change some other options here, but I'm just going to pull this up so you can see it. That's so you can create an outline if you'd like. And finally, I like to use inner shadow, which is right here. I'm going to click on that because it makes it look like it's indented or kind of below the surface. So let's just drag some of these out so you can see what I mean. That's inner shadow very fancy. So those are our layer effects. I also want to point out, you can see that there's a layer effect on it by clicking on this little effects button here. And I can, when I click on that, it'll come back up. I can turn it off and there we go. Now let's step it up one more time here. We got our text selected. Now let's go up to layer, new live filter layer. Let's try distort. And first I'm going to pick perspective because the thumbnail of this video was made using a perspective. 
Now when I do that, I get this live perspective box. You'll also notice in the layers panel, I have this perspective attached to the text down below. Now what this means is, is it's a layer, it's non-destructive, it's a filter, and I can change it, delete it, and do no harm to the text. So let's just start dragging these nodes around to change the perspective. And you can change this however you want to make it look cool. You can put it on like a wall or a road or like on your face if you're a wrapper. You can do that. Uh, and that's cool. So I can close that. And you'll see I have this perspective. Now I can turn this on and off by clicking this button here. So you can see with and without it. And if I liked it, but I wanted to change it, I can just click on the perspective again. The box comes back and then I can edit the text further because it's non-destructive. Cool. Let's delete that one. Let's do one or two more. So text is selected. Let's go up to layer, new live filter layer, distort. And this time let's pick uh, liquify. When I click liquify, it's going to bring me kind of this different uh, workspace. And here's all my options I can use. I won't go through all of them, just a few of them. And right now that you're seeing my mouse, it's, it's kind of like a brush. And I can make the brush bigger or smaller by using my keyboard. So if I use my left bracket key, it gets smaller. If I use my right bracket key, it gets bigger. And that just means it's going to give a bigger effect across the text while I'm doing it. So the first option here is called uh, push forward. And you'll see if I just start clicking and dragging, it kind of does this to my text, just a certain effect. And again, this is all non-destructive. I can change this later. And I'll show you one more that I like, uh, which is here called the turbulence tool. It makes it look like it's turbulent. I don't know what it does, but it kind of makes it look like it's like ripped paper and you can just kind of, you know, mess around with your text. So I'll just say we did this. I'm going to make it kind of wonky. Sure, let's do that. Okay, now I'm going to click done in the top left. And now you'll see in the layers panel, I have the liquify filter applied and I can turn it on or off. So it's, there's no damage to the actual text or I can go back in by clicking on this. But for now, I'm just going to delete it. One last one I want to show you, you should play with all those live filters because they're all uh, pretty cool, uh, is something, another live filter, but we need a background. So what I'm going to do is go over to my stock panel right here. And what I have is uh, cracked texture searched for. Now, these are all free, royalty-free images you can use in your stock panel, so feel free to use those. I'm going to click on this one, click, drag, and let go. Now, it's going to be really big, so I'm going to zoom out. I'm going to shrink this picture down, put it back over top and zoom back in. Now, if I go back to my layers panel right here, you'll see that my texture is above my text. So my I can't see my text now because it's below. So what I'm going to do is click on this texture, click and drag it below the text. So uh, I want to change the color of this text because I don't like it as purple. So I'm going to make it white just by moving this color wheel here. Now with my text selected, I'm going to go back up to layer, new live filter layer, distort, and this time I'm going to pick displace. Now when I do that, my box comes back up. And I have a couple options here. Now there's a load method. I'll show you both of these. There's red, green, and there's the Sobel three by three. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this button that says load map from layers beneath. Because, so what that means is now the text, the hello text is going to kind of mix with the layer below it, this cracked texture. So when I click on that, you'll see now that the text is sort of taken on the texture below it. And the more I pull this up, you'll see it kind of goes through the cracks. And it, this will look different depending on how your text looks and whatever texture you're using underneath it. So that's a cool one I really like. I'm going to reset it. And now it's set by Sobel 3x3. I'm going to do the same thing. It'll just it, It's going to look similar, but different. The load map from layers beneath. And now you can see, again, it's kind of taking on that texture below. So this is really great if you want like text to look like it's written on a wall, like spray paint or on a shirt, or you just want to give it a bit of an edge and you can drag this up to obviously make it look as strong or uh, as weak as you want. So I'm going to uh, just delete that and leave it at that. Now, uh, if you're looking for some some assets for your Affinity Photo or Affinity Designer, look no further. Check out my website, bydesignmethod.com. I got everything you need, so you don't need to you don't need to stray from this relationship. You don't need to... I got everything you need at home. Uh, for, um, anyways, uh, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Do what all those YouTubers say. Like, comment, subscribe, write about me in your diary, name your kid after me, whatever, whatever they say. Uh, thanks so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.